Bacchanal Federation of Agriculture. On today's episode, we're going to visit a couple of farms across the province that teach us more about the agriculture industry here in Newfoundland and Labrador. First, we're going to visit the Orums at Mark's Market in Wooddale, central Newfoundland. And if you want some really good red pepper jelly, you'll hit them up. Let's check it out. I would like to welcome everyone to Mark's Market. Uh, we're located in central Newfoundland uh, in Wooddale in between Bishop Falls and Grand Falls. I've been farming uh, full time for four years uh, with my father. I graduated uh, university in 2011 and been home on the farm ever since. What got me into farming um, was I grew up on this farm and uh, been helping out working around the farm since I was a little boy. I didn't always like farm work and my father had to needed to help so I was more or less forced to go out to help them out around the farm because we are a family farm. Everyone had to contribute a little bit. Um, but as I grew up and through high school, uh, I, I began to like it a little more. We started out at it and Christopher um, really had no interest in it or very little. He was actually in his last year of high school, he was doing grade 12 and um, he went to his dad one day and said, uh, Dad, what, uh, what was it like going to Nova Scotia Agriculture College? His father always had a passion for it as well. So they got into that a little bit. And he went back to his uh, teacher advisor and gave him the idea that he had. And he's going to do his first year of university here in Grand Falls, Windsor. And his advisor said, if you know you want to do that, why don't you just go right on and get into it? And he did, and he didn't look back. Um, and he was only young when he did it. And he came back home and said, uh, you know, Dad, Mom, I don't, want, I don't want to work for the province. I don't want to work for anybody else. I just want to expand on what we have. So he's got quite the passion for it, let me tell you. Right? A typical day on the farm is uh, get up 6.30 or 7, uh, come down to my parents' house and have a coffee with my father and talk about what we're going to do on throughout the day. Um, every day is not the same, so I would say there's not a typical day on the farm. Um, we could be harvesting potatoes, carrots, or cucumbers, or uh, weeding. You just don't know. Whatever needs to be done uh, has to be done. So what we grow here at Mark's Market, uh, we grow uh, the traditional uh, vegetables that uh, through the years have always been grown in Newfoundland and some non-traditional uh, vegetables uh, such as uh, beans and peas, kale, cantaloupe, watermelon. Uh, we try to grow uh, things to our customers' needs so if someone asks us to grow something we uh, try our hardest to grow it. Well I bought the farm uh, 26 years ago and uh, at that time I was a part of a, a cooperative group that processed and sold vegetables to the wholesale retail trade. Now, about 13 years ago, we set up a little market here on the farm and uh, we started growing a diverse range of crops and we've added that to, to what you see today. And, uh, it makes for a much more interesting day to go out and deal with cucumbers and tomatoes and melons and, and, and a variety. And we still do grow some turnip, cabbage, carrot and potatoes. It's also extremely rewarding for me to get up and work with my son every day who's, who's entered the business and, and uh, we, uh, we, we farm together. Pick one here and, and cut it for you. You're <laughs> busting up now. I cut them last time. They bust like that. There. Cut a piece of wheat. Quite a.
full of water and full of sugar. It, it, it's it, natural sugar. Beautiful. Uh, we're here at the cantaloupe patch. Uh, we started growing these uh, two years ago. Um, last year was a good success and we had great demand for them so we put in a lot more plants this year. Uh, so we're expecting we have a couple thousand here this year. Um, the fruit that aren't typically grown in Newfoundland so uh, we have to do some special things to get them to grow. The first is to lay down this black plastic that's here. Once the black plastic's put down, uh, we plant our plants that were grown in a greenhouse into the black plastic and uh, put these hoops out and make like a little greenhouse over top of the plants. So what I like most about farming um, is starting a new year and being able to turn the soil over after a long winter and um, being able to wonder what what your crops are going to do this year. My favorite time of the year is, is the fall of the year when we're doing the fall harvest, uh, seeing the crops mature and, and looking at the quality of the crop that's out there. I particularly like tomatoes, uh, the tomato crop turning green to red and managing and picking uh, uh, that crop is, 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 is my uh, key crop. Uh, it's a, it's a beautiful time of the year. A lot of you people have heard the science and the art of farming. I find the fall of the year more appeals to the art side of, of myself. Uh, see the colors, uh, see the crops, managing uh, the, uh, to have the right color in the field of the product you're growing. And, and, and the field becomes more of a canvas to me that, that I walk and, and, and enjoy, you know? And that's, that's uh, the, the, the science of farming got me to that point. Farming is, is, is a highly technical business now that where uh, I'd certainly recommend anyone interested in entering a farming business do go to post-secondary school and, and get an education. It certainly uh, broadens your scope when you come back to the farm. And as well, there's a lot of other opportunities uh, for people who want to enter this uh, industry, however, don't want a farm in support uh, through fertilizer companies, chemical companies, uh, extension work, helping out producers better uh, grow their crops and, and, and those type of things, crops and the livestock industry uh, requires a lot of support. So there's a lot of avenues for uh, and work opportunities for people who have an interest in this field. My personal education uh, comes from a four-year degree program, uh, a Bachelor of Science in Agriculture at Nova Scotia Agriculture College. And my father's is a diploma in plant science from the Nova Scotia Agriculture College. Um, I think this was a a great spot for me to go and learn about farming and different systems that people have around the around the Maritimes or Atlantic Canada and being able to share the passion for agriculture really really made me proud. It's a great field to work in. Uh, most of the time you're outdoors working with with people both as, as farmers and as support people. Uh, the nice thing I like, the nicest thing I like about this farm is the interaction with the customer, having people come to the farm and, and uh, look at what you're growing and talk to you. I remember uh, one day last year, uh, two ladies came to the farm and when they were leaving, I thanked them for, for visiting the farm and they looked at me and said, thank you for growing this product for us. And that's, that's a very rewarding uh, comment and, and uh, you get good positive feedback uh, from, from, from people in this industry. Thank you to the Orms for showing us around Mark's Market. And did you know that they could grow watermelons here in Newfoundland and Labrador? Because apparently Mark's Market is doing it, so hopefully we'll see more of that in the future. Next we'll be visiting D&D Farms in Cormac and visiting Crystal Parsons for our Women in Agriculture series. Let's check it out. 
So I'm Crystal from D&D Farm and we have an abattoir as well. So we have um, a sheep and beef farm and we do all the processing of those animals ourselves as well. Um, I didn't grow up wanting to be a farmer. I didn't uh, have an interest in agriculture at the time. Uh, I did go to university and do a business degree and uh, my parents started a farm about 20 years ago and decided that I was going to come and work on the farm for a summer and I guess farming chose me. So my role on the farm is owner and operator um, along with my parents as well and a typical day uh, you would start off feeding all of the animals which is quite the chore. Come on, you know what this is. So if I do it from this pole to that pole. And then after that, you tend to go over and check on the abattoir to make sure that everything is running smoothly. And then it's back again in the evening to do some, some more chores. So that could be weighing the lambs, it could be um, doing some health checks with the, the cows. And then it's back to feeding again in the evening before the day is finished. My favorite part of working in agriculture is definitely the animals. Um, they, uh, they show you a different side of them when you're working with them every day and you learn compassion and empathy for sure. Um, it's definitely my, my favorite part of working on the farm. There's lots of other activities that you have to do, but working with animals is definitely the most joyful. On the farm, we use a lot of um, computer technology as well. So we keep track of all of our animals and their birthing, and um, it helps us to pick out what we're gonna use for breeding stock. It tells us how well the animals are growing, and uh, it helps us to choose uh, future stock. So this is our, F our FID reader. And every sheep and every cow has an RFID tag. So that identifies every individual um, animal on the farm, including the lambs. So everybody has their own number. Um, the reader uh, tells us who they are. And then this connects back to our computer software program. And that um, all uh, accounts for their, their lambings, um, their growth rate. This also hooks up to our weigh scales. So every time we weigh the animals, it'll tell us how much they gain per day. Um, and that allows us to pick out the best breeding stock that we can possibly have on the farm. So I went to university and took a, a Bachelor of Business degree. Um, a lot of people don't assume that you would need any, I guess, formal education if you're a farmer, but it absolutely helps in every aspect. You are running a business, it's not just raising animals. And so all aspects of that business degree uh, becomes helpful when you're running a business. So you have to do your bookkeeping, uh, you have to do your marketing, you have to do your branding, um, you are running an agricultural business. So it's more to it than just, just raising your animals as well. And every aspect helps. So on the farm, um, we have a whole lot of different activities that we have to do. We do a complete farm to table operation. So we raise all of the livestock, plus we also do all of the processing. So that takes into a whole lot of different um, skill sets that you need. And not one person can do all of those skills um, and activities. So you have uh, the, the animal management, you also have um, the veterinarians that you have to use, you need accountants to help you with the business side, you also have to have a butcher, meat packers, and all those different skill sets to help you along the way. So here on the island, um, we are a little bit at a disadvantage in that we have to bring most things in. So the more that we can become self-sufficient with whether it's animal feed or, or any other aspect, it's more the better. <laughs> so um, we try to make all of our own forage. Uh, we still have to work on some of the, the fields to get to that point where we're self-sustainable. But anything that you can do, um, whether it's bailing, um, your, own, your own feed source, making your own, sorry guys, <laughs> making your own silage uh, so that you have 
your own self-sufficient feed source makes everything a little bit more cost efficient and then you're limited on the amount of stuff that you have to bring onto the island. The biggest piece of advice that I would give somebody looking to get into agriculture is to do your research. Um, it's not just about having animals, you also have to make sure that you have a market and you have to love what you do. So make sure that it's something that's suitable to you and it becomes a lifestyle, something that you want to do every day. And that would go for any career, for anybody. Um, just make sure that you love what you, love, what you do. So we sell all of our products through the farm. Um, we have a storefront at the abattoir and most of our product goes out through there. We also provide products to certain restaurants and we're hoping to get into a local grocery store very soon. We started the sheep side of the farm in uh, November of 2016 and we brought in 50 uh, females and three rams from a farm in Ontario. And since then we've grown our breeding stock to about 250 to 300 sheep and uh, that's, the, that's the range that we like to keep it at. So with those females and the type of sheep that they are, they can breed out a season. We could market up to about 800 to 1,000 animals per year if they're used in an intensive lambing um, program. And this past year, we've added in some beef animals. So we currently have 31 um, beef animals between the cows and the calves. And we're hoping to aim to about 50 breeding uh, cattle and along with their calves as well. And we sell all of that locally uh, through our abattoir. So we sell on a farm gate basis, which um, so the consumer comes right into the building and they purchase the, the meat from us. And that allows us to have that communication with our customers directly. So it's a family farm and we also um, kind of operate that way uh, so that our customers get to know us and we get to know them as well. So it's a very uh, community oriented um, business. So a lot of farms are um, multi-generational farms and um, you've already been born into that lifestyle and then you can decide whether or not that's something for you. Uh, like myself, I wasn't born into a, a farming family. So it's a, a little bit of a challenge starting out new but you have to find out if that's something for you. And there's all kinds of resources that you can get. Um, there's agriculture in the classroom, there's the Department of Agriculture, uh, there's lots of specialists out there. You can also go out and you can get a summer job with a, a local firm, see if it's something that you enjoy. And even though there are challenges starting fresh, there's no reason that you can't become a new farmer, a new entrant and support this agricultural industry. Thank you Crystal Parsons for showing us around D&D Farms. I actually got to go on this farm tour. My favorite part was seeing the baby lambs. Next, we'll be visiting a cranberry farm in Bishop's Falls, Recon Development Cranberry Farm, and seeing their packaging facility, Cran Pack Foods Limited in Centerville. Let's go check it out. I'm uh, Corey Reed. I got the 50 acre cranberry farm here in the central Newfoundland, a Recon Development. I uh, started in 2009 and uh, developed to this 50 acre farm is here now. And on our farm we grow uh, two different types of cranberries mainly. Uh, we got Stevens variety and Pilgrim variety. Uh, we also got four new hybrids we brought from uh, Buckers University in uh, New Jersey. So they're uh, test varieties. So we're hoping they're going to be uh, very productive in the coming years. Uh, we got uh, 16 fields, uh, cranberry beds developed there now and we got a couple more that's not still undeveloped. So when the uh, plant cranberries initially uh, have to level the bag off so it's equal so it's equal level for flooding for water to me put about six to eight inches of sand on top of the bag and we put drainage tile through the bag because cranberries don't like to be wet and people think they grow on water but they actually like to be dry when they're growing. Water is only used for harvesting and for frost protection. Once that's done we run irrigation lines to so we got an irrigation system to protect the berries from the frost and protect the buds in the spring. You get uh, plugs from a nursery, individual plugs, you plant them about a foot apart. And uh, they grow as a vine, similar to blueberries, partries, berries, strawberries. And uh, they grow upright, and all them uprights have different flowers that get pollinated by uh, honeybees we bring in, the natural bees that's around the area. You need bees to pollinate, so without the bees you don't get no food. So. You gotta have the bees. So mustard pollinated to, to uh, grow through the summer. Early October is the cranberry farmer's best time of year. So they're ready to harvest. Cranberries actually have uh, air, little air pockets inside, which makes them float. 
put water on the fields, and then we go over we go over fields with a tractor like this or similar, which knocks the berries off in the water, and they float. All together with a with a big boom. And then you pump them in. You pump them or use that like an elevator to take them out of the wire and load them in the trucks or bins or bags or every farm is different. Some uses trucks and just big semi notes. Some use bags like we do. Depends on your plant and your abilities at your processing facility. Once our uh, berries are harvested here in the loaded board trucks to go to our uh, processing plant to go there and they're cleaned and processed again. Hi, welcome to Cram Pack Foods Limited. We're a company based in Centerville, Newfoundland, central part of the province. And we're processors of cranberries that are grown in Newfoundland. We have several farms in Central as well as on the west coast of the province. We deliver harvest and del deliver their product to the plant here. They arrive on flatbed trucks. They're taken off the truck, weighed, dumped into the upper where they flow through our equipment, cleaning equipment.
treatment and they end up here. Uh, the inspection belt, we have a group of ladies that pick off imperfections. Proceed on to our racks in the trays where they're put into glass freezers and they're frozen IQF. They're brought back out and they're dumped into large totes and we also do a bit of secondary processing in smaller boxes and gallon bags for local sales on the island and in the area but most of our product right now goes to international markets and they're distributed worldwide. If you want to learn more about Agriculture in the Classroom, Newfoundland and Labrador, you can check us out at AITCNL.ca. There's a lot of different events we do throughout the year and different programs that you can get involved in and volunteer for, so we'd love to meet you. This program is brought to you by Ignite.